Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars The Bad Batch review episode. As always, today's content is brought to you by the lovely people over at the Eckhart Slaughter Patreon. If you want to get access to a bunch of extra content, including live reactions slash watch-along videos for this Bad Batch episode and more, you can check out the Eckhart Slaughter Patreon. Even the lowest tier, which is just a buck fifty, will get you access to the video content. So again, that link is down in the description. Alright, so this episode of The Bad Batch was very interesting and very important because it gave us a lot more insight into to a post order 66 world for our clone troopers as always when i do these videos i'm gonna spend the first little bit talking about the key issues then at the end i'll give a full episode review so you can skip around using the timestamps down below also as always when i record these bad batch episodes i do have my daughter with me she's got a hold of a gatorade bottle and I'm swinging it around so expect to hear some background noises i'm sorry but that's what happens when i record during the day anyway Let's talk about the Bad Batch. This episode, kind of surprising to me, continued the basic plot we got from last time. We saw more of Ryloth, and specifically we saw the Bad Batch working with Hera to try to rescue the Sandula family from Imperial Prison. But the much more interesting plot thread, in my opinion, was what we got with the clones. Last episode, we were introduced to a clone named Hauser, and you could tell that he was really not cool with a lot of what the Empire was doing. Some of it was a bit more subtle, you know, looking on while other clones were active or not directly being aggressive against civilians, but he was also obviously kind. He seemed to care about the Sindula family. He acted a lot more similarly to pre-Order 66 clones compared to what we've seen of clones after and during Order 66. The crazy thing about this episode is we see that brought to the extreme where he's full on disobeying orders from the Empire and arguably committing treason. By this point, the Empire is now fully occupying Ryloth. The Bad Batch compares it to what was going on on Raxus. And we see from both a moral point and also a strategic point that Hauser is just not okay with treating civilians like they're the enemy. For one, he recognizes quite practically that it's going to cause an uprising, but he also doesn't like harming the people that he was meant to protect, especially not Hera, who he obviously has a bit of a soft spot for, which was hinted at last episode. The big thing is that he's been tasked with rounding up all of the supporters of the Sindula family and really just anybody who could be labeled as an enemy of the state. And the defining moment for him really is when he realized that he can no longer be passive anymore. He has to actively rebel against the Empire. Cham and the Bad Batch who have rescued him are walking into a trap and Hauser stops them. They are about to walk through a door with guns pointed at them and Hauser says no, he's basically the only thing that keeps them alive. But the really insane part of this episode that I actually wasn't expecting is that after that Hauser walks through the door and he really puts it all out there for the clones and I think this was the pivotal moment of the season so far because we didn't know if Hauser was a malfunction if something had happened to him or if he was naturally sort of resisting the effects of order 66 and the inhibitor chip and now we know Whatever's going on with Hauser is something that can happen to a lot of clones. Probably about a third of the clones heed his call and literally lay down arms. They refuse to serve the Empire, and that is insane. And I'm sort of wondering whether this is a genetic thing. Maybe there's a certain strain of clones who have slightly stronger will. Maybe it just has to do with what they've had to do for the Empire and what they've seen and that the inhibitor chip can only inhibit so much of their natural kind of service for the Republic and the people of the galaxy and almost they're good because it's weird to say they're violent warriors but they are kind of good people. And I don't know, it's actually a kind of emotional scene, like not really crying emotional but the clones have been through so much, they've been used as tools for the Republic and now the Empire, and you've got to feel bad for them, and this is them just sort of standing up against their users now and saying, no, we'll no longer be a tool of war, and I think we're getting an even better idea of why by a year after the Clone Wars, clones had largely been phased out. I'm just kind of scared of what's going to happen to the clones now. I feel like they're almost certainly going to be wiped out en masse, and that is going to be a very traumatic and very sad thing if it happens in the Bad Batch. Also I also thought Hauser was about to be shot by Crosshair. I was glad he didn't. I hope that we see him more in the future, whether in this show or somewhere else. I'm going to talk about this later, but I also think we may have started to see Crosshair crack. That look that he had at the end of the episode, it just wasn't the same Crosshair that we got after his chip was reactivated. But again, I'll come back to that near the end of this video. 
With that said, let's get into the actual review. And first of all, you guys were right. Orn Frita did not die. His fatty lek saved him, so good for him. Very, very lucky. I still feel like he probably wasn't fully involved with the plan. Like, I don't think he knew that he was going to be shot by Crosshair. He probably just assumed that the Empire would maybe set him up to be assassinated, then would step in at the last moment. And that's if he was aware of the plan at all. Not that that's super important, just kind of interesting, and it helps the show continue to fit with the uh, future canon because he does appear in the Lords of the Sith novel. Overall, I thought this was a really great episode. I was surprised because I talked about this last time. I thought this would just be a glimpse into the life of Hera and a glimpse into Ryloth at this point, and I thought we'd probably move on. Like, I didn't think the Bad Batch appearing in last episode was going to be connected to anything else other than to give that episode a reason for being in the show. Not that it really needed one, and of course that was somewhat thrown out the window this time, with us getting a bit of a smaller universe of course, with the Bad Batch spending some considerable time with Hera and Chopper and rescuing the Syndulla family directly. I don't have a problem with that, that's how Star Wars has always been, this show hasn't overly done it in my opinion, but I can see some people complaining about that, and I think those complaints are valid if that's not something that you're into. Still, I mean, Chopper is the best. Chopper is the absolute best character ever in Star Wars. A bit of an exaggeration, but he's really phenomenal, and seeing him jump and jetpack around will always make me happy. He just like shanked a droid at one point and like pushed him away. Like, little moments like that, even though it does give you a small universe vibe, it does help me connect the show with something like Star Wars Rebels, despite it being so different. The plot is fairly routine, we're seeing the Bad Batch more and more trying to figure out whether they want to be mercenaries or freedom fighters, and in this episode, they definitely go the freedom fighters route. They rescue Cham Sandula, who of course will be leading a rebellion now, and they don't charge him for anything. He keeps Orn Frita's McDonald wrapper strewn vessel, and they don't have to pay the Bad Batch anything. That money will go towards furthering a rebellion. It's not the first time that Hunter has made this decision, but I can definitely see his character changing. He was always a pretty nice guy, a pretty sympathetic character, especially for a clone, but more and more he's definitely showing that he's quite a softy. I also really like the Hera Omega moments in this episode, not because I particularly love Hera as a character. I do like her. I don't, like, young Hera doesn't really interest me as a character, though, because she's not interesting until she's a general, in my opinion. I mostly just like seeing Omega interact with another kid because she's always with adults. That's interesting. I thought the scene where they're attacking the Imperial facility was wonderful. Honestly, mostly because Tech's flying was amazing. He was pulling some Star Wars squadron style drifts. I really liked the shuttle that Hera was flying as well. That whole scene was really awesome. And of course, as that's going on, we get the somewhat emotional scene with the clones beginning to break through their program. All in all, it was a really great episode. I was worried we were going to be left on a cliffhanger, but it actually was a little bit longer than some we've gotten this season, so that was really nice. And I'm interested to see what happens with Crosshair as well, because Crosshair, of course, was featured in this episode. He's still hunting down the Bad Batch, or at least he is formally now after this episode, but he's sort of always on the watch. He can predict them more than the Empire usually can, so he sets up a trap which is not sprung. But I also was seeing something in his eyes at the very end. Like, he didn't seem so sure as he's hunting down the Bad Batch, and I'm almost wondering, are we going to get that moment where Crosshair returns to the light? Like, is Crosshair going to break his conditioning? Because that look at the end, I think it meant something. I think it meant that he's not the confident, cold-hearted killer he's been all this season. And I wonder whether it was seeing Hauser lay down his arms that may have changed something. And I don't know, maybe that will be the key to defeating Order 66 will be showing compassion or something like that, getting the clones out of this military mindset. But that's all I really have for today's episode. As always, the visuals were absolutely incredible. I loved the city on Ryloth. It all looks great. I don't really want to waste too much more of your guys' time, though. This was an excellent episode. I really liked it. One of my favorites of the season so far. But guys, that's all for now. Again, thank you to everyone who supported me over on Patreon if you want to help the channel out and get access to, for example, a Bad Batch watch-along video where I give commentary in the episode. Join the Eckhart's Ladder Patreon. Link, as always, down in the description. You can get all of the video content for a buck fifty, and the other tiers have some really, really cool rewards. Till next time, though, guys, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.